right, welcome everybody. We will wait uh, about 30 seconds more to see if anyone else pops in, uh, and then we'll get started. I did put the meeting notes uh, in the chat there uh, as well. And uh, don't forget to put your name in the attendance section of that document so that we know that you were here uh, and can sort of keep track of things. All right, let's get started here, and uh, we'll do a quick round of uh, introductions for folks that are going to be watching the recording that maybe aren't familiar, and we'll start out with Diane. All right, well, I am the Director of Community Development here over at Red Hat, and one of the longtime co-chairs, co-conspirators on OKD and Origin prior to that. So I think I probably have the longest running history, so if you have questions about why we did things the way we do, um, I'm probably to blame. So um, yeah, welcome, um, and maybe Dietri, why don't you go next? Cause... Okay, um, hi everyone. Uh, I am working for Red Hat, and uh, I joined this meeting to actually, I want to contribute to OKD, and just looking forward to understand things better. Yeah, that's all. Are you brand new to, to Red Hat? Are you one of the new customer facing folks or where are you landing? I I I have been with Red Hat for five years now. Um, but I'm new to this team, customer focused engineering team, and because of that, you know, I'm uh, you know, learning OKD more. Awesome. Cool. We 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 have a track for you. So yes. Cool. Okay. Excellent. And Michael. Hi, I'm Michael. I'm a uh, technical writer with Red Hat. I work on the OpenShift line, and I am currently the OKD li liaison, I guess you would say. I've been still fairly new with the team. Hey, I'm Brian Innes. Um, I work for IBM, but here sort of as a hobbyist, home lab enthusiast, I'm running o OKD and um, at home. Excellent. And I'm Jamie McGarra, who's a co-chair of the OKD Working Group and uh, at the University of Michigan, where we have uh, OKD running in a variety of capacities uh, across the university. So let's jump right into the uh, agenda item of current projects. And Mike isn't here to talk about um, the status of uh, moving things over. Uh, let me take a quick look at that pull request uh, to see what the status of that is. Let's see. It's ready to merge. We can merge it. Um, I think he, the last I talked to him, it wasn't. It, he was waiting for more feedback from the higher, the, the Uber. Okay. I see, working. yeah. So it looks like updated uh, uh, eight days ago. So we will um, put that on hold until... Uh, the uh, next meeting to see if we have an update for that. Uh, a charter update and placement. So the main group signed off on putting a link to the charter uh, in uh, off of the main website, off of okd.io. Um, it's just a question of folks notice that there's a couple of um, inaccuracies uh, and some things that are outdated. So it'll be up to um, one of us or many of us to take a look at that and look for anything that is outdated or incorrect and updated. Um, okay. So does anyone else want to volunteer? I'm going to take a crack at uh, looking it over. Does anyone else want to do uh, give a second pair of eyes uh, to help me out with that? I'll definitely take a look at it. If you take a first pass and then tag me in it. Excellent. And any issues you have, and then I'll, I'll review it. Do you have merge privileges on that repo now? I think I, you I, and Joseph should, but if not. I, let me, I'll check and find out. We'll get that squared away for sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see here. And uh, update respective calendar invites. So I updated the main meeting one. I haven't updated this meeting's calendar invite yet. 
uh, but I will uh, updating it with a link to this documentation. Uh, and Christian did give me uh, right access over the calendar invites. So um, I will update those. And I noticed that actually that I accidentally did it as HTML, which it's showing up in iCal. Funny if you're if you're um, importing it via iCal. So I will fix that so you don't see the HTML. Um, that's that. Um, uh, so the next general meeting will have uh, a discussion of uh, install.md, uh, and um, then that leaves us actually to the last thing on our agenda, which is anything more from Brian uh, in terms of inclusive language stuff. Take it away, Brian. Okay, so um, <clears throat> I did the review using the, the tools um, and created a pull, uh, an issue um, on GitHub. So there are some things that we've got to do. Um, a lot of them are going to focus around when we rename the master branch to main. Um, I don't know how the site is built, what the pipeline is behind this. Is that, so, can, can I pause for it? Is that um, the OKD.io site? Yeah. Okay, yeah. All right, so, so what um, I was going to... So go, keep going. Sorry, thank you. I just want to make sure we're on yeah. the same page. Yeah, I just think we should be able to post the, um, the a link to the pull request. Sorry, yeah. no, the issue into the chat if, if people want to follow. So yeah, um, <clears throat> so most of the issues are around the master branch being renamed to main. Um, and this is all going to have to be synchronized and done as one sort of activity. So I say I don't know what the pipeline is on how the site gets built. Yeah. Um, there are a few references within the site, so it sort of links back to the raw file on GitHub, back to itself within the in the, into the repo. Um, so again, those are hard coded to the main the master branch. Need to go and get changed to the the main branch. Um, there's a couple of other things, but nothing huge. So um, I'm not sure. Is so, that somebody within Red Hat that will actually yeah. look at that in terms of the, the tooling, or so is that I, something we need to do? I just went in and and you did talk about this at the. I didn't I didn't watch the video from last week. I missed last week, so it did get talked about. I assume at the last meeting, I just assigned two people, Jiri Fala and Will Gordon. Um, they are Red Hatters. They are the 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 Wizard of Oz's behind the. The scripting and everything that builds this stuff. Joseph Meyer also has done some work at, with them, so I, I probably should tag him as well to have a look at the issue. Um, and Jerry is in the Czech Republic, so he's asleep right now, but um, and not quite asleep, but probably eating dinner. So it probably won't happen right away, but um, they're pretty responsive um, depending on their workloads. And I'll probably throw a note in for, for Joseph also to comment on it, because I think they're the ones that have to actually review all the scripts in the back end and they they launch the automation that rebuilds the site whenever i crash it or edit anything so they'll do it we'll get there so thank you for for doing the the work and you're going to make rich Bo, bowen at and the ospo office very happy yeah, trying to get everybody up to snuff i i guess the the follow-on then is that we've got the OpenShift slash OKD repository. Um, I think there's also a couple of other community ones that Jamie mentioned. So we probably want to go and do the same, mm -hmm. same with those ones. Yeah, so let's get this first one done. And then the OpenShift one, I think Michael um, Burke and the engineers are going to do that. We don't, we, we can't make them do that. They have to do it and they're in the things. but yes. Well, is we have officially switched to main as of today. Timely, perfect. Timely. All right. Um, yeah. So, um, and anything else you want me to help with? Happy to to jump in and. and help you know, with. I just any what I would love to see is more IBMers coming showing up. So, anything you can do to you know cross promote there um, and get more folks from IBM, um, okay. that would be wonderful. Um, the other thing that, and we've talked about this before, but since Dietrich is, is it Dietrich? Is that how you say it? Yeah, it's Sruti. 
Dritti. 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 Yeah. Okay, I, I can do that. Dritti. Um, we have sort of a, a, a little bit of a training ground for um, looking for bugs in docs.okd.io that we're using right now. And um, Michael Burke and I have walked through it a, a number of times, but um, one of the things we we like to encourage the customer facing engineers and any newbies to do is to do an install of OKD somewhere on whatever hardware Red Hat lets you have access to, whether it's AWS or whatever. And then as you're doing it, um, walk through the docs.okd.io, the latest released version of it. And if you see anything, and there are okay. lots of things, especially focus maybe first, because we keep trying to get this done, all of the, anything that references RHEL CoreOS instead of Fedora CoreOS or okay. the, the wrong thing, um, that, those are easy lifts. And you can look in the issues um, to see some other previous docs one, docs related one for how we structure an issue. Um, for a docs, we tag it in, in the subject line, it has in brackets OKD, and then we tag it with docs um, as one of the labels. And then okay. assign it to, do a slash assign to Michael Burke and myself, um, just okay. um, Demuller 2001s. You can look at any of the other ones. But if you could find a few of those, and Brian, um, I'd really like to just get you to have log your first issue, like Brian has done a wonderful thing here. You know, do four of those. And then with the new release that's coming out, or came out, 4.8, I'm sure there's things, um, again, that we haven't caught. Um, and then if there's stuff really missing um, in our um, documentation in in the generic documentation. There's a lot of other documentations like the charter we were talking about earlier, and the guides we were talking about earlier. But I think for the brand newbians, yes. um, those folks, um, I think looking with us a, a fresh eyes on the docs.okd.io is really helpful, and it is a slimmed down version of the OpenShift docs with that okay. Michael's team has overlaid with some. I, I, I would call them patches, but I don't know if they, the pull for it to build them is um, slims it down and relabels, re-edits some stuff. So we don't always catch everything. And we can always do better. So got it, got it, Diane. Um, uh, I could go through the, I could do the installation and check to, uh, through the docs. And if I find something, I'll, I'll raise an issue. Yeah. Especially in the, it, examples so like when they give you something to cut and paste often that's like you'll see it doesn't say fedora for the operating system or something those those are the things that we kind of gloss over because we're looking at so many sets of documentation now for open shifty things okay all right I, 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 sorry Dan. i got a question on that one when there's a feature that's called the open shift thing do we call it the OKD thing, or does it stay with the OpenShift thing name? Because there was a couple of them I come across in the on the overt sort of install path, and I, I just didn't know whether I should raise an issue there because it's actually like a feature that is like the OpenShift, which which exists on OKD, but I, I didn't know whether we, we we renamed it or kept the name as it as it is within the OpenShift. Um, Michael, do you want to? I can't think of one that comes to mind at the minute. Yeah, it, yeah if you want to raise an issue and send it to me, I'll take a look at it. Okay. Maybe that the, the writer hard coded OpenShift in. We have a variable that switches back and forth. Maybe the writer put in OpenShift and it should have been a variable. But some yeah, things I mean, are named OpenShift, uh, like a service like OpenShift, you know, if it's OpenShift Cluster Manager or OpenShift, whatever, like there's going to be things that will yeah. stay OpenShift because the actual component is called OpenShift or the actual service is called OpenShift something. So there are some cases where it would stay OpenShift, yeah. It's it's kind of a, you have to kind of look at is like, so if it's an operator or if it's a, um, I'm trying to think of another example. If it's an operator or a service or anything like that that has OpenShift in the name, it'll generally stay OpenShift. Um, but always best to file something 
uh, that Michael can take a look at and then just to verify that that's the case. You know, because it's like the, the um, some of the operators have OpenShift in the name of them uh, for sure in some of the, some of the services, so. Uh, I did post uh, an, uh, a new business item, which is create a docs process document. If someone wants to take that on, that would be awesome, which is, uh, Diane has given the same spiel multiple <laughs> times about how we go through this process. And it might be helpful if there was actually a document that says, uh, you know, when you come across something like this, file a ticket here and tag it this way, et cetera, et cetera. So um, if someone here wants to take a crack at it, that would be great. I could take a shot. That'd be awesome, Michael, thank you. I was actually asked internally to do something like that too, so. So things missing, things labeled wrong, code examples. Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. Yep. All right. Is there anything else that we need to cover at this meeting? We're only 18 minutes after, but we covered our current agenda. Um, I don't like, I don't think we necessarily need to have a meeting just to have a meeting if we've gone through our materials. Brian, it looks like you have something. Yeah, there was that post that I put on the mailing list, um, 30th of June. Oh yeah, that's right. We were gonna go through that, yeah. Why don't yeah, you share, me... your, share your screen? Um, Brian, and walk us through it again, just so it refresh everybody. This might be a challenge. I've never done this on here, so let me. <laughs> I have got the right permissions and plugins and um, whatever else I need to do that. Worst case scenario, um, you might have to rejoin if you have to set security permissions to allow, but. Yeah, that's what I'm worried so let me try that. Uh, Google Groups, did that work? I've got a stop sharing button, so. There we go, it? yeah, we can see it, very good. We can see it, yes. So it is that one. And this is probably like really, really tiny, so let me. Nope. I can't get rid of the same thing. Okay. So, I mean, what I've tried to do is, is really, um, as I sort of got in, involved in the community, so, I mean, the way I usually do it is I lurk for a few weeks just to try and work out how the community works. Um, and then I, I just sort of really made some notes on some of the challenges. Um, I think this is a slightly different community because it's based on alongside a project, a, a commercial product. So one of the things that I'm, I'm still struggling with is as a community, what can we do and what are we sort of be holding on the product team to do? Um, um, but one thing I, I did find is I, I looked at the okd.io site and I just made some sort of comments on some of the challenges that I've seen um, and some of the confusion that, that I, I, I come up with. Um, so it's probably this bit. Um, so there's, there's all these sections on the actual front page, but a lot of them point back to the same page. So as you're wanting to sort of go deeper and find out more, it's frustrating that all you're doing is jumping down the page to the next section where you were hoping to maybe go a little bit deeper. Um, and I think one of the one of the, 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 the issues is, it's like there was a lot of places to find out where stuff was. So, I mean, it took me a while before I found out the blog with the, the live install session that you ran, the, the workshop that you ran. And there's a lot of really, really good information in there. Um, but it actually took me a while to actually get around to finding that particular blog and following it on, because a lot of the technical information in terms of how you get started and was in that, that set of videos. Um, I'm seeing quite a lot of confusion in terms of what we use to do what. We've got the Slack channel, we've got the, the this group, 
Um, when I look out, people say sort of report issues, then we've got a discussion section, we've got the mailing list, and some people say go to Stack Overflow. Yeah, and the, the, the Stack Overflow should be gone now. We should, that's a remove thing. Um, and the Google group and the mailing list are the same thing. But well, again, it's, 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 yeah. it's, yeah, no, no, it's, this is good. This is what yeah. fresh eyes are about, you know, it's like. Um, and, Brian, and the one, oh, sorry, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I mean, the, the one thing that, that I, I became very aware of is we've actually, we're actually supporting two communities, two different communities. We're supporting the users that need help, but don't really want to come in and be part of the sort of the inner group that wants to help and contribute. But then we've got the second community that want to contribute. And at the minute, we seem to have everything mixed up. And it, it's not clear on where do I go to sort of talk about, I mean, I'm interested in what's going on with the operators. I'm longing to get pipelines working on OKD without having to put the, so there's things like that that I want to contribute with. But a lot of this, the, the posts are about people getting stuck and wanting support. And it really goes back to the conversation probably about a month ago, where Jeremy was looking for where to put the, how to be a good sort of community member sort of information, in, instruction. So I actually think that it would be useful to actually um, have a support and maybe a, commun a contribution community or something, separate the two out and, and, and have something. So, yeah, I just decided, I just put it into a post in terms of where I sort of got stuck or was confused about things. And um, and I'm going to add another one to the list is the actual OKD.io, the technology that that's using oh, isn't it's document yeah. friendly. <laughs> No, it's not. It's a YAML-based uh, framework, and yeah, it's 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 what I yeah. So I, I have to say I'm very Buddhist about the site, um, and maybe too Buddhist about it. I, I I love to let other people edit and 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 do it, and and um I I practice non-attachment, so um to to this site, which I I do take all of the 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 blame for. I I basically created it out of nothing. Um, so, yeah, the framework that's under it, I, I've had a couple of um, iterations of it. Je Joseph Meyer, who is now not coming to the docs meetings, um, did an update um, to at least get it to the latest versions of the things that were used, the frameworks and things, um, which was a good help. There's been a little bit of background stuff inside of Red Hat to maybe port it over to Drupal but there are no resources to help with that. So, um, and anyways, mm -hmm. long story short, I have the two people that I tagged in your inclusive language thing, Will Gordon and um, Jerry Fala, who are sort of assigned um, and resigned to helping me keep it, keep it alive. I am not adverse to moving it to something else. Um, uh, that's really not a, a problem for me. Um, it's just uh, main, you know, Ongoing maintenance and love and care for it is is been is been the thing. We don't have a lot of resources on it, so. Um, okay, because so I, anyway. I, I have used a, a technology that um, I ported another community within IBM over to, and I believe the K Native community are looking at as well as investigating MK Docs. It, it means that once you've got your templates and CSS set up. All documentation is Markdown, pure Markdown. So to actually write content, even if you're not a Markdown expert, you've got about five minutes of learning the yeah. half a dozen syntax features, and then you can write documentation. It, it's it's just when I looked at what Mike had done, you need to be a full end sort of front end web developer to to add content with, with that. So again, if if there's anything that we can put up like a beta site and, and let people have a look at it. I'm happy to maybe do that. Yeah, no, we definitely definitely could do that. What I would suggest is um, like so some of these things that you're suggesting here, um, you're welcome to pull make if you make an issue, 
Um, I will merge it, or I think Jamie now has merged privileges. Um, okay. If you make an issue against the okd.io repo, uh, which I think you can see and do, um, I'll definitely accept the merges and, and do that. Um, some of it is, yeah, the framework that I'm using is, is not optimal. Um, and a more docs-based one, I, there's always one, uh, Porter SH, I think it's Porter SH is my go-to example of what I think is brilliant. Let me see if I can find that one. And, um, blah, 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 blah. Porter.sh. I, I noticed the tool that's the um, catalog source builder. It's a Red Hat project. I noticed they were using a different technology. I'll just throw this in the chat. This is, this is uh, if I had a fantasy land, and I'm not sure what's under the, here, this is the website. The woman who runs this, um, the docs for here, is also in the Kube contributor um, project as well. So she's doing some other things, and she's just done some brilliant stuff. Um, and that, and that, that's my um, fantasy life, that we have enough resources to do something along that lines. It hasn't happened, but um, I'm quite willing to, to work with folks to, to move it to something there. What, what was the, the link of the site that you did for IBM? Um, if you go to Cloud Native Toolkit, or one word. Eek. Too many browsers open. And I'm trying to work out, is it a, what was it a, it's a. Cloudnativetoolkits.io. Cloud dev, yeah. D-E-V. Dot dev. Yeah. Oh. Link is in the chat. Okay, okay. thank you. So I cannot type. Oh, there's no S on the end of it, that's why. Oh, that looks very IBM blue, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we had to we had to uh, change it, but if you go to MK Docs, yeah, I don't know what the Porter one. I have to ask what Porter is under the hood. If you go to mkdocs.org, this shows you what the templates can do. So. If you just look at that, that's the same underlying technology, but just with a different template applied to it. Mm -hmm. So you can actually change it to what you want. But the good things are, you get a good menu, you get in-page navigation, and then you get a full site search, and it's all a static website. Wait, is this the same stuff that Ansible documentation uses? And a lot of open source. Things? Right, yeah, of... yeah, yeah, okay, I've seen this, yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is, this is very nice. Um, it looks it it looks less like a landing page for, um, for a project, um, like if you look at some of the GitHub landing page people, and more to me like uh, documentation. So yeah. Um, now now if you look at what we did on the Cloud Native Toolkit, we created a custom template just for the front page, and when you click into any of the documentation, you come into a more documentation site. Okay. Because they wanted the front page to look more like the mm -hmm. project opening page, and then after that, you go into the documentation stuff. So it's it is customizable, and if this is something that we feel is a better direction, I'm happy to do the core yeah. work to get it working. The other what thing I, is, yeah. So my preference, I mean, I, I like it. Uh, I like anybody doing organi reorganizing the stuff and, and making it more usable, but um, something a little bit more welcoming. Um, and that's, I think, what I like about the Porter one is that it, it has the what is stuff. It has how to get on the, the landing page thing. And I, I, if you take a look at that, um, yep. it, it's, yeah. And it, I mean, it, this, I'm sure the CNCF paid her to do it. Um, and she works over at Microsoft, and now I cannot remember her name to save my life at the moment. Um, and she came to um, a meeting, actually. Uh, yeah. I think in early winter or something. Yeah. What, so, can I pull things back a little bit? So we're sort of focusing on the technology right now. Yeah. One thing I think would be helpful to talk about is this division between, or the boundaries between the working group the community that's sort of around the working group 
and the larger community that's the users. I don't think that that's well delineated. One of the things, for example, is um, the Google group. And we talked about this, I think, at the last meeting is, so the Google group, I, it, well, it seems like the working group needs to have a communication channel for working group stuff. I sort of thought that's what the Google group was about. But we're seeing support questions getting posted to the Google group. Um, that, to me, seems like we should instead have a Google group that is, or in addition, have a Google group that is like OKD support or OKD community or something like that, well, as opposed to OKD working group. Yeah, the I think with Google groups, you, we could create another Google forum um, that was OKD working group dash docs, another one that was dash support um, or answers or whatever we wanted to call it. But um, the the theory behind um, having just the single one is because we had so many limited resources, people would be having to watch all of these different um, spaces and keeping everybody in one. Um, and in the beginning, um, worked okay. Um, and moving people who were asking support type questions over to the Kubernetes Slack um, was what we're trying to do is that if people were asking support questions to make them nudge them over there and that's kind of where I nudge everybody um, like I have to monitor the Facebook OpenShift stuff you know at all of you know LinkedIn you, you name it and trying to get them all to one place um, it is easier for me um, and for I think that but I think I mean you're right there's got to be some segregation of um, threads about support so well, maybe we could look at the Google group and create a forum within there, that Google group, that was just support questions. And then one that was docs question. I think you can do that with Google groups. I haven't tried or played with it. But with the same Google forum, just creates subtopics or subforums. I'm, I'm sure I've seen that done for other groups. Yeah, I think so. Um. Uh, I, I, I'd be happy to poke around for, I don't know that you gave me any access or not, I don't know, uh, but I'd be happy to poke around and... Uh, poke around and then we can just, I, we can do one-on-one -on -one and create those. Um, okay. if, if you don't have permission, just ping me and Slack and we okay. can do a... I, I just think that would be good because we're... Yeah, no. It's, things are getting a little bit mixed up and, and it's hard to wade through sort of support questions and want, I want to use it to post like group, like working group related stuff, but then it sort of gets buried with the support questions. I think that sort of gets people sort of disconnected from it. Yeah. Um, the, the other, oh, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, and these customer facing engineers like D3 here, um, we can get them to monitor the support as well. Like, so there's about, I think there's 60 of you or some crazy number of them that are being onboarded into the customer facing engineers. And this is, there's wanting to use OKD as their training ground um, and to inspire them to be more open sourcey, which we like a lot at Red Hat. Um, so maybe what we, if we separate it and then we can throw some of the customer facing engineers to the wolves. But really the, the traffic we've been trying to direct it to either OpenShift dev or OpenShift users in the Kubernetes Slack, because then it's not just the OKD working group that's looking at it, it's the broader, all the OpenShifties, um, all the flavors of them, those engineers are there too who can pop in and answer a question. Yeah, and it may be helpful to look at the way that we label things. Um, there's you know, the community link sort of is split into stuff related to sort of support and documentation, and then also the working group, like connect to the community is actually working group stuff. Um, but I don't know that the working group is the community so much, right? So there's the user community, and then there's the working group community. So it might be better or helpful to tease that out uh, as we modify the website. Uh, to make that a little yeah. bit clearer. Yeah, I, I also noticed that on the OpenShift Dev Slack channel, 
we actually say for OKD technical support, visit the community working group forum. So we're sort of saying for technical support, go to the forum at the top of the Slack channel. Oh yeah, that's problematic for sure. And Diane, do you know if that um, process of joining the Kubernetes Slack and getting into the channel, has that all been resolved in terms of now folks can just click the link and register and get in? Because for the longest time that was broken and there was like... That, some... Yeah, you still have to request access um, okay. to Kubernetes. The CNCF has a, is a, a little gatekeeping about that. So yeah. that's, that, that's not an auto join. Yeah. You know, we, I, I do own the OpenShift common Slack. So if for some reason we, we don't like that, that's too much of a high gate for people to, to fill out that form, then um, I can always create, create a forum um, and a Slack channel in the OpenShift Commons one. But again, that's yet another thing for people to monitor and get notified by. So the fewer, honestly, the fewer of them, the better. Um, even if there's a few collisions. But I think the OKD Working Group Google Form, I think we can fix that. Yeah. The other thing is, is I would say recipes and guides seems redundant. Yeah, I'd put a uh, note that recipes probably can be dropped now that we've yeah. created the guides. And that was an attempt earlier to do basically the guides in a different form. Um, and I, I think another useful thing would be um, to try and get Vadim to do a presentation on something on how to actually do a build, and then let's do, let someone document that. So, so if Vadim can do a technical demonstration, and we record that, or we can then document it. Because again, I think I looked at some of the sort of first issues or tag sort of good first issue, and one of them was about <coughs> memory. And it took me forever to realize that the OpenShift installer for OKD is actually in Vadim's Git repo. It's not within the open source Git repo. So I only found that out by, I think it was in one of the videos, I noticed where he was actually poking around in Git. So we, we actually don't say that anywhere. So just is having that, a technical. Is that documented anywhere in the guides, Jamie? Uh, I do not think so. And I, I there's, Vadim had talked a couple months ago about um, wanting to provide more documentation on um, also like building the installer and people being able, because like Joseph, in fact, had wanted to do his own install tweaked uh, to his liking. And we don't have documentation on that. So there's a little bit in the repo, but there's nothing that's a, a sort of step-by-step um, how to do it type thing. And we could do that. And it, that would also encompass where does it live, right? So we could kill like three birds with one stone. Um, uh, if you can frame, outline maybe Brian and Jamie, what it is you want him to cover um, and feed it to me. And I can, I can record it on Mondays. I do AMAs with upstream project leads um, as part of OpenShift Commons. So I can get him to just do a session on that um, sometime in August, and then we can get it transcribed and then feed it back through the docs group here to turn it into, you know, some form of either a .md file or um, an addition to the guides section. Or maybe even incorporate it, Michael, into the docs.io um, in a real way. Yeah, you get look at that scared look. Um, but yes, so if you can give me enough meat, um, about what you think he should cover. Um, I, we try and protect Vadim from any extra workloads. So the clearer we can be about the steps we want him to cover. And that thing that is in his own repo probably shouldn't be there. And we should be able to pull it into something. Um, but we have a lot of things floating around in El Nico's repo and Vadim's and uh, Charo Groovers and Joseph's and you know there's there's a lot so there's a lot of you're in the right place Brian and D3 um, there's a lot of work to do so yeah and, but, but I, I mean for me 
that's one of the best ways to learn to get involved with the community. Get someone to do a video presentation, and then you write it up. Because by writing it up, you need to go in, get the details right, yeah. and you you then go start exploring. So I'm I'm happy to do some of that work. Cool. I'm mm -hmm. happy to pay to get it transcribed, so that you're not trying to transcribe it. I'll, I'll get. That's easy to do. There's tools, easy tools with YouTube to do that now. Um, so we, if we can figure it out, um, and then make the ask, and he will be. Um, he's in Europe, so he will be on better vacation time than me here in Canada, but um, yep. I don't know when he's planning on taking them, but I hope he is taking them. But yeah, that that's a brilliant idea. I thought he had sure. done, done a video on that, though. There's something niggling in the back of my brain he, that he, he well, did something. He, Sorry, Daniel. No, no, he did an overview for the, um, what talk did we do? It was the first sort of big talk that we did this year in February or, or he, he, uh, he, he March. He did part of your, where the guides come from. He did a technical session in, in that, in, on that yes. day. But yeah. he, did, he didn't cover enough to enable you to do it yourself. Yeah. He, he actually pointed some key highlights, but didn't quite go far enough to actually how, we, how the process works. But I got a lot of information from that one video. All right, we will uh, then most definitely um, loop that in. Brian and I will work on that. And Brian and I also have a shared desire uh, to see pipelines in OKD uh, very soon. So we'll find out. And that's the other thing that needs to happen is um, I would like to work with Vadim to get a clearer sense. He did delineate the operators a little bit better on um, Christian's uh, issue, which listed all the operators that need to be moved over. But there's not a clear sort of explanation of, okay, this one actually needs some development work on it, or we need to approach, um, you know, the, the folks that are hosting it currently and have them do a bit like, it's a little bit unclear still on some of those what needs to be done, except for the ones that are in Red Hat's hands. It's clear that those are and actually, there's something, Vadim said something about pipelines in 4.8 or 4.9 that something was going to change, and I can't remember what it is, but it might be that pipelines will be um, made available for OKD directly. I don't know, but we can ask him about that. But that would be I guess, great. I guess the first thing is, is how do we go and add a new catalog source that gets added as part of the OKD installer that we can then start adding operator bundles into. Right. Is that, I think having that, that, that first bit of infrastructure then means that there's a way of then adding an additional operator bundle into it. Um, and I mean, yeah. some of the operators, I think they, they should go into operator.io. They're actually community operators. They're not an, an OKD operator. They're a community one. Right. But, but things right. like pipelines, GitOps, we want to do storage virtualization. They are all red hat type things. Yes. Which are... All right, Brian, did we cover everything from here? We kind of were all over the place, but did that cover um, yeah, what was in yeah. your document? And... Yeah, it, 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 it really is in terms of helping people feel like they can onboard quicker and removing some of the confusion about where do you go for what? And yeah, I think we covered it all. Yeah, there was one thing that it predates you by a couple months is when we did start working on the site revamp last winter, there was a, a, a there was feedback from Vadim and Christian about, uh, or I should say against using the word support in our website and in our documentation because yeah. it gave the impression that people were entitled to something by using OKD, were entitled to support in some fashion. And so if we can think of a better word than that, uh, that implies yeah. like community support or something like that, then. I, again, I, I would go back to sort of the, um, the porter.sh site and maybe the Helm site as well to see what the verbiage is that they use because they are open source projects that don't really have a supporting thing behind them. So I, that, and I'm just going to peek 
again at Porter and see what she, what they I just I personally yeah so there's install quick stock community learning and docs on the Porter site and I think under the if you go to the community um, talks about engaging with the community as opposed to getting support from the community using the word engage to ask questions show off something you've created collaborate with others troubleshoot something you sh you aren't sure is a bug yet and just say hi to introduce yourself and then it says at the bottom of it that bug reports should still be github issues but for the rest start here and um, get the conversation going so no it there, there's no go ahead no th th their their thing is they really don't say the word support um, and that's that's kind of one thing I do want to draw people's attention to that I actually agree with is if you look at the sentence, second sentence on their community page, they say we prefer it over Slack because people can more easily join in on conversations over time and find answers to their questions. That's actually something that I agree with. And so when Diane, you mentioned that there was an, an emphasis to move people over to Slack, I that's always been sort of my concern is that Slack, it, it, it just flows so fast and people will ask the same questions or the, there isn't an institutional knowledge that gets built up or a community knowledge that gets mm -hmm. built up on Slack. So just something to, to think about. You know. And I'm just gonna look at what the Helm site is. Yeah, it's a good point. I'm just trying to see what Helm has because Helm's the other one. Helm .i, I think it's helm.io. Oh, and they just use the discussion section. So that's interesting. So Porter just uses the discussion section of GitHub, of their GitHub repo. We could do that. Yeah. Because that's sort of what Vadim was directing folks to use anyway. So instead mm -hmm. of pointing people to the Google group or pointing people to Slack, we could point them to the discussions which would allow things to get tagged. It would allow questions to be listed as answered or not answered, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And here's the, here's the other one. And again, they, I'm just looking here to see if I can get the. Yeah, this is so simple. <laughs> yeah, but as simple is good, you know? Yeah. It's, uh, this, I think this is generated from GitHub, I'm not sure. GitHub oh, page. and see their community link for mm -hmm. Helm goes to their discussion section. Yep. Or actually, well, it goes to their issues, but uh, it's still, it's, it's, yeah, much less of a hurdle than joining the Slack. Yeah. 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 And, you know, I'm, and then Slack just becomes Helm users, and, you know, and Helm there. Um, I've also, okay, cool. Thank you. Cool. All right. Um, I'm so those and, and compared to the cloud native toolkit site, which I really like, um, like if you look at Helm Docs or even docs.okd.io, they have that that same same look and feel as your site does for the native. So for the the cloud native toolkit. So there's a distinction between how we structure docs and how we create a, a welcoming landing page that's easy to navigate. Um, so that's, I think, what I tried to do with okd.io is create that welcoming landing page and then push people to either docs.okd.io, um, which is, you know, pretty good stuff, but not great. Um, and, you know, do that. So I, the Cloud Native Toolkit look and feel is, for me, is, is kind of docs heavy. Um, but if you can mm -hmm. customize that the landing page to look more like Elm or the Porter page, then you know Bob's your uncle, and we're happy with that. Yeah, I mean we could even take the CSS that's on OKD.io and put it within the landing page. So yeah. what are the steps that would be needed to to set up uh, for Brian to set up an example and for us to get DNS? to point to it, um, you know, like beta.okd.io. Yeah, I mean, well, the, the way we did it for the Cloud Native Toolkit is we just use GitHub Pages. 
and then we just put a C name redirect into okay. beta. So if you go to beta dot, that's exactly what you get. You go to a Git GitHub yeah. repo that uses GitHub pages. We use GitHub Actions to actually run the script that convert the markdown to the static site. Um, I'm totally fine with it. Um, it needs to still have the footer on it and some of the branding with the panda and stuff like that that we have on the okd.io site and then Diane needs to be trained on it. But the more we can have something that's not like the YAML base and when you see the CSS, don't yell at me. Um, <laughs> well, I, mean, I, well, I mean, what I can do is I can have a go at just creating a Git repo in, in my own personal um, yeah. Have a go at creating that landing page, putting the docs behind it. Um, happy to invite other people in if they want to play around with it as well. And we can set up a beta site. And then when we're happy within the docs working group, we can then sort of communicate it to the wider working group and get their feedback. And, and then it would be um, when we get to that point, Will, and Gor Will Gordon or Jerry Fala can do the redirect um, for the DNS. Uh, for, for us as, as we need it done. Um, I don't think they will, they, they will not be disappointed to lose um, having to maintain this site with me. Uh, yeah, the commons, the OpenShift Commons site is the same framework and so is Project Quay.io. Um, the, so those are the three sites that I have um, been given the keys to the kingdom for. And I'm trying slowly with commons to do something similar to what you're doing, but it's probably gonna end up in Drupal. Um, Okay. which is what it started out seven years ago as. Okay, well, I mean, the, the great thing about this is you can just let GitHub Actions do everything for you. So a push means that there is no maintenance. Once you agree a push, the site auto-generates and publishes itself. Yeah, I, I, I would love, Brian, I would, you know, you know, yeah. Free t-shirts oh. for everyone, you know, <laughs> whatever, you know, we, we've I'll got that. Love. Okay, I'll take a look at that, see, see what I can do. Thank okay. you very much. And let's, can we formalize your email uh, so that we're not going back to the email, like maybe put it as an issue or something like that in the, or a discussion item in the in the OKD repo or in the, yeah. so um, if you, you do that, say. then that way we're not digging for an email thread um, and yes, we sir. can actually like break it down and assign people and, Things like that. And again, this is me not quite knowing where I should have put it. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. It's it's that's a, was a great start, and we just go from there. Yeah. Yeah. And you've been so, doing great stuff contributing, by the way. This is very so helpful. Do you want it as a discussion item or as an issue? Let's do it as a discussion item. I think because then that 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 does again puts it where we we put our money where our mouth is. Say where we want people to go for community stuff. And then um, we can work through all of that. Um, and yeah, that's that would be a great start. And I'm looking forward to getting off editing YAML files. <laughs> all right, do we have anything else that we need to cover? It seems like we got a lot of work ahead for us. All right, and, and Jamie, ping me when you get a moment free in your schedule and we can walk through the Google group thing and see if we can figure it out. If you can't, if you don't have permission, one, I have to get you permission, um, and two, um, I will just do it on the fly. Um, I'm, I'm sure there is a, a, you can Google it, how to fix that. Thanks. All, all. right, folks. Thanks. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. Bye, Dish.